My CNC mill's been starting to give me a little back talk, backlash in the Z axis. Let's dig in and see if we can fix it. Welcome back to Cloud42, I'm James. If you follow the channel, then you no doubt have seen me using my CNC mill back here. It began life as a Grizzly G0704, but it's now a full four axis CNC conversion with double nut ball screws, an enclosure, and a high speed spindle. The last time I used it was for an engraving project, and I was having a little bit of trouble controlling the engraving depth precisely. And I think what's going on is that some backlash has crept into the Z axis. So let's dig into it today, see if we can figure out where that backlash is coming from, and more importantly, what we need to do to fix it. So before we jump in here, what exactly is backlash? Backlash is simply lost motion in the axis of a mechanical system, or in any mechanical system. So when I command over here on Mach 3, which is the controller software that I'm using for my mill, when I command it to move, a thousandth of an inch, does it actually move a thousandth of an inch or does it move less than that? And you can end up with play in a system that can cause you to get less motion than you expected. And a CNC machine, this will cause your dimensions to be off, circles will not be round, uh, it causes all kinds of problems because you know you command it to move and it doesn't move. And so where does backlash come from? Essentially it's any kind of play in the mechanical system. And if we look at the Z axis here, and talk about what we've got going on. We've got the motor that is then goes through a coupler and it's connected to a lead screw. That lead screw is connected to the frame of the mill so it doesn't move, but as it turns, there's a nut that's attached to the head that goes up and down on that screw, moving the head. And so backlash can come in in any of those connections. We could have the coupler. The coupler could be loose on the motor shaft and you could get backlash there. The coupler might have some play in it if it's, got, if it's worn. The coupler might have some play where it's connected to the lead screw. The lead screw bearings where they're mounted to the column could have some play. The nut actually moving on the screw, which is back in the column where you can't see it, could have some play in it. There could also be some play in the mounting of the nut to the head. So in any one of those cases, if there's play, the motor might start to turn, but the screw doesn't start to turn yet because there's play in the system or the nut starts to move before the head moves, and so you lose some motion. Now there are some other more exotic kind of causes, like if the gibs were not adjusted properly, or if there's play in the gibs of the system, you could get a scenario where you start to move the head, but before the head moves, it twists or moves to the side or does something like that. That can look like lost motion or motion in the wrong axis. We're not gonna worry about that today. What I think I've really got going on here is just straight up lost motion in Z. So let's take some measurements, see where we are, and then hunt it down and see if we can figure out where it's coming from. So I've got a dial indicator set up here attached to the table, and then the tip of that will bring the head down to bear on it. So I'll move this in Z. And we'll bring this down, preload it, and try to get it to about zero. In fact, we'll try to get it to exactly zero. Let's see if we can get this move back up. Okay, so I've now been moving in the downward direction and I have the needle right on zero. Does that look like zero from your point of view? I think so. So we're sitting right on zero. So now I will zero out the Z DRO. And so you can see we're set at zero. Now the DRO numbers here, even though I'm gonna tell it to move a thousandth, they're not gonna move exactly a thousandth. And the reason for that is just because um, it's actually a metric ball screw, so by the time it maps through the stepping and micro-stepping on the motor, we end up with some small fractions, and you can just ignore those. I'm commanding it in thousandths of an inch. 
and we're getting about a thousandth of an inch. If it's off by a tenth or two, it just doesn't matter. So I will continue now to move down five steps, or five thousandths of an inch. One, two, three, four, five. And you can see we've actually moved down to five thousandths below, and we've got negative five thousandths showing here on the ZDRO, exactly as expected. Now I'm going to change direction and step back up five thousandths. One, two, three, four, five. And you can see the needle has just started to move on the fifth step. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And we're pretty much back at zero. We went down five steps but had to come back ten, which means we've got five thousandths of backlash. So we're here at zero, and you can see we're at point zero zero four nine. So we're at five thou on the ZDRO. So if I zero that and go the other direction and continue upward, and I'll step a bunch up and then I'll step back down until the needle actually reads zero on the indicator. And we're now showing negative five thousandths. So there's five thousandths of lost motion in this axis, which explains why I was having so much trouble with engraving because I was trying to actually engrave five thousandths of an inch deep into the part. So depending on where this fell within that five, if I got five thousandths of error and I'm trying to machine a feature that's only five thousandths in dimension, uh, you can see how that's going to cause a pretty big problem. So we need to figure out where this is coming from. Is it coming from the coupler on the motor shaft? Is it coupling, is it from the coupler itself, from the coupling to the screw? Is it the screw moving? Is there play in the ball nut? Is it the mounting of the nut? We can take some measurements at each of those locations and try to figure out what's actually going on here. Okay, I moved the camera up here so that you can see the coupler for the Z ball nut. And I placed a little blue mark on the motor shaft and on the nut of the screw down here just to make it a little bit easier for you to see what's going on. And let me do some stepping back and forth and let's see if we can see any kind of lost motion through this coupler. So I'm just going to step back a thousandth of an inch at a time, and I think you can see moving left and right, going in this direction, I can see the motor shaft turning step by step and the screw moving with it. So I'm moving up. Now I'll turn around and move down one thou, and you can see that the motor nut, or the, the nut down here is actually moving. If I'm going back and forth one thou, step, step, we're not really seeing any lost motion there. We're certainly not seeing five thou in lost motion. So I think the coupler is fine. I don't think we have any play in here. It's a two-part coupler. There's an aluminum part on the motor shaft, an aluminum part here on the screw, and then there's an acetyl disc between those. And if that wears, we would see the backlash here, but I just don't see anything there. I think that's pretty rigid. So the next possibility is that the actual bearings that mount this have some play in them. So we can test that by putting an indicator on the underside of this coupler and checking to see if it's moving up and down as we step. So I've got an indicator here. Let me see if I can get this into position so that you and I can both see it. And I'm just putting the needle on the underside of the bottom half of the coupler. See if I can get this close to zero. There we are. That's zero, and now let me do the same thing. Let me step to the left here, which is up. And we are pretty, and let me readjust that and get that exactly on zero. And then I'll turn my dial to the right and see if it moves. And it looks like it has moved maybe two tenths, maybe three tenths. It's really hard to, hard to judge that. But just to make sure we're doing, we're, we're making sense here, I'm going to zero the z-axis. And because the, it's possible that the bottom surface of that is not precise, so we need to take the measurement in the same physical position, but moving opposite directions. So I've got it zeroed there on the DRO, just to make sure I know exactly where that is. I'll zero this. Now we'll continue five steps to the right. 
that was six, and then I'll go back to zero. And it looks like I'm seeing the same two tenths. And move the other direction, and then come back to zero. Just make sure we're measuring in the same spot on the coupler. And that puts us precisely back on zero. You have a little bit of parallax from your point of view. So I think it's fair to say we've, got, we've found about two tenths of the backlash right here. The screw is actually moving up and down two ten thousandths of an inch. Now on this particular conversion, the preload on the back-to-back -back, uh, angular contact bearings is controlled by the nuts. There's two jam nuts on the end of the screw and you tighten those to control that, um, the preload on those back-to-back -back bearings. I do not like that. I much prefer the way it's set up on the other two axes of this mill where the bearings are back-to-back -back with shims so they're tightened down in the mechanical system bottoms and the preload is set by shims. I may make a new bearing block for the top of this, but for now, two tenths is not the five thou we're looking for. So, so far we haven't found it. We know the motor's connected to the shaft or to the coupler. There's no play in the coupler. The coupler um, is connected to the lead screw and the lead screw, the ball screw, is moving about two tenths. So we found about two tenths of the backlash. What's left would be play in the ball screw itself and then play or looseness in the mount to the actual z-axis slide here. Let's, uh, let me change the setup here and let's do a little bit more investigation, see if we can figure out what it is, whether we're dealing with actual play in the ball nut or whether we're dealing with the ball nut mount. Okay, I got a new setup here and this is a little bit nuts. I actually managed to get a dial test indicator back inside the column on my little Noga mount so that it, the tip of the indicator is actually buried on the top of the physical ball nut itself. So there's, uh, the ball nut is back on the screw and then forward of that is the mount that comes all the way out and attaches to the slide. So the tip of this indicator is actually sitting on the ball nut itself. So we can see the motion of the ball nut in theory. So let's see if this works. So let me step up here a little bit and then step back down to zero. Let's do that again, see if we can end up in, this, in the right place. Yeah, so we're just shooting past it. So let me try to get that zeroed out. This is a sketchy setup. Okay, so that's down to zero. Let me back up and see if I can repeat that. Okay, that's down to zero. Let me zero out the DRO, and let's go down one, down two, and I'm gonna go back up two, up one, up two, three. Looks like we've lost about two and a half at this point. So there we're back at zero. One, two, three, four, five. Now we'll go up. One, two, three, four, five. And it looks like we've lost, it looks like about one and a half. So let me go back up. There's one and we're down by about a half. One more step and we're about a half thou above. So yeah, I think we're losing about one and a half thou at that point, which means Two tenths of that we know is up here in the uh, bearing mounts. And then now we're at a thou and a half. So we've lost another like 1.2 or 1.3 thousandths of an inch at the ball nut. So through this whole stack up, that's how much we have. Now, if that's all we had here, I could totally live with that. So let me just pull this out and put it directly on the slide. And let me hit the camera and make you all dizzy. And then let's see what we have all the way out on the slide. So this will be the whole system. In fact, the only thing that is not, in fact, th this will be the whole thing end to end. So we know we had about a thou and a half 
to the nut. Now let's see what we have at the slide. Make sure I can make this work. Okay, so that's going up to zero. We'll go up another five. One, two, three, four, five, and go back down. One, two, three, four, five. And I'm measuring only three here. Interesting. Okay, let me grab the other indicator. I wonder if we've got an issue with cosine error or something going on. Okay, I got a bigger indicator set up here and let's do the same little test. And I would totally expect we should get to exactly the same 5,000 we were measuring down below. One, two, three, four, five, and then go back. One, two, three, four, five. Interesting. I'm only seeing 2.1, two and a half thou here. That's back to zero. Very interesting. Only two and a half thou. Let's see if it, I wonder if it has to do with the position. Let me run this all the way back up. Let's do it up near the top here as well. Okay, I've got it up here at the top. Let me do the same thing here. That's zeroed. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11. So now I'm measuring 6 thou, a backlash at the top, and less down lower. So I'm starting to think that maybe this is uh, a flexing issue on the nut because the slide is probably tighter at the top because it spent less time up there. I can try loosening the gib and adjusting it and see if that changes it. But I think we need to also check the hardware that mounts the spindle and just see if possibly that's um, loose as well. Okay, I've pulled off the, uh, the cover down here so that we can get at the adjustment screw for the gib and we may play with that in a minute. But the first thing I want to do is rotate the head because I think we can get to the ball nut mount if we do that. So 17 millimeter wrench, I'm going to have to loosen the head mounting bolts. And unfortunately, this means I'm going to have to retram the mill, which is something that I always seek to avoid if possible, but there's not really any choice here. Okay, I'm not going to be able to lower it much, but I can get it down a little bit here. Okay, so there are the screws that mount this to mount the ball nut to the front of the slide here. Let me see if those are tight or loose or what's going on there. Those feel that one felt tight to me. Those are tight. Now there's also a little screw in here that um, is used to adjust the nut up and down to keep it from rocking. Let me see if I can get at that. Unfortunately, there's a second one that's below the mount here that I can't get to right now. Boy, that feels just completely jammed. So I don't think that's what's going on. Let's see if snugging those down made any difference at all. It's going up to zero, let's go up five, and down five. Well, we're down to four thou when we had six. So it's an improvement. There was a little bit of play there. 
Let me play around with adjusting the gib here a little bit. One, two, three. Okay, so now I've only got two thou missing, and this is where I had six, as up here at the top. I'm bringing it to zero just to be sure we're talking about apples and apples. It's up to zero. Let's go up further and go back down to zero, and we've got two thou. And since we know 1.2 of that was in the ball nut, that's pretty good. This is up on the tight end too. I wonder how much play we've introduced because of loosening this, but given the backlash problem, okay, and that's bottomed, good. Okay, I've played with this a little bit more and messed around with it. You can see I've moved the head back up to the vertical position uh, to make sure that the weight was kind of in the same place. And when I did that, I and brought the indicator back down here on the end of the spindle, I discovered that I had loosened the lead screw or loosened the gib too much. And then I was getting that kind of complex motion of the head that I was talking about at the beginning. And so I was in this situation where if I measured the backlash all the way back here on the slide, it was down to one thou. But if I measured the backlash out here at the front, it was really weird. It would move, I would take maybe three or four or maybe even five thou before it started moving and then it would move a couple thou and then it would stop again and I'd lose five or six more. And that's because what was happening is the spindle was actually flexing or moving around on the mount and it wasn't actually staying nice and parallel. So I played with it some more and I started tightening the gib back down until I reached a point where the motion, the weird motion I was seeing from the looseness of the gib was gone, but the uh, backlash in the lead screw started to stack up again. And so I've adjusted a little bit and I found a happy medium. You'll note that I have the head canted right now. That is just so that I will remember it has not been trammed and the next time I come to use the mill, I will know it has to be trammed. So let's see where we ended up. I am moving uh, up right now. And so let's move this up until we hit zero. Oh, and I bottomed out, went off the, went off the travel of the indicator. I thought I had a big problem there. Let's preload this and do it again. So now we're gonna go back down to zero. That's zero. Now I'm going to zero the DRO here and I'm gonna continue down one, two, three, four, five thou. And I read that on the dial and I'm gonna go back up one, two, three, four, five, six. And we're back to zero. In fact, we're slightly past zero and we're reading one thou positive. So we actually have now less than one thou of backlash in the z-axis. Now let's continue up. One, two, three, four, five. Go back down. One, two, three, four, five, six. And we're back to zero. So we are in great shape now. This is actually better than I was hoping for. I was hoping to get it down to just a thou and a half, but it looks like Tightening the screws on the ball nut mount probably took a little bit of flex out. There's still some flex in the system because it's aluminum and of course the steel screw is really a spring. Everything is a spring when you're dealing with uh, small enough uh, dimensions and precise enough measurements. But I think this is gonna be more than plenty to work for my application. Got the thing within a thou. I think that's better than it was when I built it originally and it looks like it was just a loose ball nut mount and uh, too tight of a gib adjustment. And in, in all fairness, that tighter gib was probably necessary when I had the heavier head on it. But now that I have this lighter spindle, I think we're in good shape. That's all I've got for you today. I will finish buttoning this up and tramming it and get on to my other projects. And we will pick up again in a future video. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Feel free to subscribe to the channel and leave me a comment. I'd like to know what you think. Thank you for watching.